Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackier.com, and today I'm going to show you how to install one of the Cena Smart HJC Bluetooth devices in the all-new HJC i90 modular helmet. Okay, this is our third install video for the new Cena Smart HJC Bluetooth devices. We've done the i10 full face, the F70 full face, and now I decided to do the i90 module. This is a price point helmet, right? It's a 188 to 215 priced modular, super comfortable fit. I really like this unit. I haven't ridden with it in, but I've had it installed in the helmet. I've made phone calls with it. I listened to a shitload of music with it. I've compared the 10B and the 10 uh, and the 20B. We have two different videos on that. In this one, what I'm going to tell you is this. Here's the cliff notes when you decide which unit you want to go with. This one is going to allow you, and this is $139. The other one's $299. This one sounds really good. It's going to allow you to listen to music. It's going to allow you to receive phone calls, to place phone calls if necessary. You're able to pair this with other universal Bluetooth devices, right? You have a reasonable range when riding with other riders. If you're the type of rider you mainly want to use this for music and the occasional phone call, right? You're not riding with a large group of people that are all using the same communicator. This is a great device. The 20B seems to be a little more geared towards riders who want just a tiny little bit better sound quality. I will say, listening to the two, I felt like the 20B sounded just a little bit clearer. When I say little bit, it wasn't a whole bunch. It wasn't enough for me to spend double the money, I'll tell you that much. But the 20B would be a really great unit if you have a large group that you ride in, right, or even just a couple riders, and you want a higher end unit that is really meant to integrate and work together. So that's the cliff notes. Look at the nerd spec sheets, you know, for all the features and bennies. This video is going to really be focused on what it takes to install this in your i90 modular helmet. First thing we need to do is unbox this. This unit's already been installed in another helmet. So, you know, it may kind of show that it's been installed, right? Remove it from its packaging. We're going to use the boom mic. Every one of these units comes with a boom mic and a button mic. The button mic is going to be used on your full face helmets. The boom mic is used with the modulars. This does come complete with instructions. Uh, let me just say they're not amazing. I'm not even going to bother to take them out of the package right now. They're these tiny little pictures. Even though I thought the pairing with the phone was not spelled out very clear. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to pair this right with your smartphone. It's a really easy process once you know what to do. A couple of different packages here. One has an Allen wrench with two internal hex fasteners. We will use those when we install the unit in the base of the helmet. This other package, we have a couple of uh, boom mic covers, so you're going to have a spare. One of these you'd be installing, and then you have these pads that would go on the outside of the speaker. And any of the installs I've done, I have not put these pads on the other side of the speaker. I would say that's going to be kind of an optional thing, right? If you feel the need to, to you know, tighten it up a little bit in that area, you could put these on. If you don't, then just save them with the extra boom mic covers. There is also a little patch of Velcro, a little circular patch of Velcro that comes in there. That is used to hold the button mic to the chin bar of the full face helmets. So that is not applicable in our modular helmet install. Anytime I'm working on a helmet, the first thing I like to do is remove the shield because I want to try and prevent scratches from happening to the shield. So on your I-90, you just simply pull down on this trigger and then pull out on a shield. This thing, easy on, easy off. Let's go ahead and raise our chin bar. Need to remove both of the cheek pads. In order to facilitate this install, I want you to slide your fingers in between the backing of the cheek pad and the internal EPS of the helmet. Three snaps. Once you have your fingers in there, you can feel them. There's one on the top, one in the front, one in the rear. Once you've released all the snaps, grab the cheek pad like so, grab your chin strap, slide it through. The way these cheek pads are installed is a little different than some of the other models. So what you need to do in order to remove them is you need to 
grab the shell of the helmet itself and hold it, and then I want you to pull back on the cheek pad like this. You can literally feel it release. Once you've done that, rotate it out and then pull. If you look right here, you'll see the angle that this is cut on, that this is molded in. That is the reason why you have to pull back. If you simply just pull out, you're going to run the risk of damaging this and you won't be able to reinstall it. Mirror image on the other side. Get your three snaps. Let's go ahead and reach in here and grab that chin strap. Pull that bad boy through. Same gig on the cheek pad. Support the shell. Pull back. And then out like so. There is no need to remove the top pad. Only the cheek pads need to be pulled out. Let's grab your Allen wrench. Let's break these fasteners here loose. This cover is installed on the helmets. It needs to be removed so you can install the main unit itself. Once you've removed the cover and the screws that come from the factory, I would suggest just kind of keeping these, right? You never know when you may need to put those back in. So go ahead and put those to the side. First step is, let's grab the unit itself, okay? And I want you to slide it into position here in the back. Take the speakers and the control pad and kind of drape them inside the helmet like so. And you can kind of look down and you can see the threaded inserts that are at the back here of the helmet. Put the longer fasteners they included with the Salon key in there. Run them down. Get both of them installed before you tighten one. I want you to run them both down so they're just seated. This is not a high torque area, right? We're not talking about lug nuts here, right? These have brass inserts that go into a little plastic piece. You don't want to strip those out or pull the inserts out. Once you have them seated, put your Allen key back in, and I'm talking probably like a quarter turn, and you're good to go. Now the unit itself is installed. Let's go ahead and grab a hold of your boom mic. It's got a red connector on it. There is also a tab on it that corresponds with this angular cutout. Line those up, push until you feel a click, letting you know it's fully engaged and seated. Make sure you don't have everything all twisted up. Make sure the harness and the speaker, it's not all twisted up. And let's go ahead and let's route the boom mic towards the front of the helmet. If you look at the boom mic, you'll see there's a little grate, and on the back there's just a slot. You want it so that the grate is going to be facing the rider. Slide this into the channel. Can you see the scale? There are four tabs on this that are going to line up with the corresponding slots here that are molded in by HJC. This is a direct integration. Slide the two lower ones in, and then I want you to put pressure towards me, and then push in, and you'll feel that dip into place, like so. It's held in there nice and firmly. At this point, if you choose to do so, you can go ahead and slide over one of the foam covers for the boom mic. From here, we need to secure the wiring for the boom mic. The channel is already there. There are little tabs that are at the very outer edge of the channel that you need to very gently force the wire for the boom mic by. That's going to serve to hold it into position. All the way back until we're now into the actual speaker pocket itself. From here, I like to route the wire 
through the remaining channel rearward of the speaker pocket and then if you see that red connector there I just kind of push that in between the cheek pad EPS in the back the rearward most EPS to hold it into position while I install the speaker. If you look at the speaker itself you'll see the plastic backing has a couple of tabs on it. The larger being the one on the bottom. You want to engage that tab with the slot molded into the EPS of the helmet first and then push in on the top portion once the second clip is lined up to hold it into place. I will be kind of capturing at the very bottom, right? I'm going to have the wire for the boom mic on the back side of this speaker. So install the speaker over that, get that slot into position, and then push the upward most one in like so. From here, you can go ahead and secure the wire for the speaker into the molded channel. I'll try and tuck away a little bit of the wiring <clears throat> for the speaker. Kind of get everything held into position. We're going to leave this loose for right now. You need to install the cheek pad in the helmet before you tidy this wiring up. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. To install the cheek pad, I want you to grab this tab here. Make sure the wire is on the inside of that. Push this in between the shell of the helmet and the EPS. And kind of work it in and back towards that unit. Working from the back to the front, continue to pull that into its channel. If you look inside here, you'll see the tab the cheek pad needs to interact with right there. Kind of push that in, tuck it forward. And now the key with these cheek pads is going to be sliding it forward once you have it on the channel. And you can literally feel that tab kind of lock in. So grab it, slide it forward, and then work the tab that's sewn to the outer edge of the cheek pad back into its channel, like so. This now is going to allow you to fold that cheek pad out and still have really good access. Can you see that, Caleb? To the wiring that we need to secure. Get that speaker wire into that channel. I apologize if this isn't you know the most wide open view, but it's kind of difficult to show you what I'm doing and do it all at the same time. Got to get that connector for the boom mic tucked in between the cheek pad EPS and the EPS for the base of the skull. Going to have a little excess wiring here, very gently, kind of fold that over just a little bit, slide it into the channel, secure the wire that goes from the unit up to the union in the EPS there, as best you can. Give you a little bit of a close-up there. <clears throat> now let's grab the chin strap and you need to feed it through the hole in the cheek pad. This one's a little tougher than some of the other helmets were because this cheek pad is engineered in such a way to help keep this helmet really quiet in the neck roll area so there's a little more foam down here than there is on the other models. So bringing this chin strap, strap back through can be a little more challenging. Once you have that back through, <clears throat> let's make sure that we have the cheek pad still secured in position because we have manipulated it quite a bit. Make sure your chin strap is pulled through and it's not twisted. Double check, everything looks good. As it turns out, I had the chin strap 
twisted here, so let's fix that. Okay, there we go, that's all good. Once you have that, let's go ahead and snap the cheek pad back into place. It's gonna be the three snaps that we released upon removal. Like so. Okay, we're done with the first side. Okay, side number two. This side has our control pad. Okay, this is a little more complicated than the side with just the speaker and the mic. So we have the control pad as well as the other speaker. The way the control pad attaches to the helmet is with this plastic spring clip right here. There are two rubber pads on the back of the unit that are meant to protect the helmet from being scratched and also to help hold the unit itself in place. I like to start by making sure all the wiring is not twisted, right? That it's all routed correctly. No twists. Let's go ahead and brace the helmet against our abdomen like so. Get that clip so it catches the inside edge of the helmet shell. That clip is going to slide in between the internal EPS and the outer shell of the helmet. Once you have that clip to where it's catching the helmet shell like so and you're supporting it, kind of pull out on it and back towards you. And then kind of work it around gently. This helmet has the drop down inner screen so as we're installing this unit we need to be aware of where it's at you know is it contacting that switch and what I found is you're able to install it all the way so the clip is right up against that edge and it does not interfere with that switch at all. So they must have designed it in that way. Maybe that angular shape that it has is so it can interact correctly with that and you don't have to slide this too far back. Now we need to secure the wiring. This side's a little bit different because the wiring that you have here, <clears throat> there's no, you don't have all the wiring inside. You have some wiring that's outside with the control pad and then you have the speaker wire that's inboard. And let's not forget, this plastic tab needs to go back into the channel that's in between the internal EPS and the outer shell of the helmet. In order to facilitate that, what we have to do is we slide this clip in between the shell and the internal EPS right in this area here, okay? What that does is it pushes the harness from the control pad to this clip all the way down in the shell of the helmet and it kind of creates a loop. That loop is where this tab is going to eventually install on the helmet. Before I even do anything with the speaker, what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to work this cheek pad in, okay? Slide this tab in between the shell of the helmet and the internal EPS as far back as you can. And then keep an eye on this, this little tab here because it doesn't fit in super tight. That gap is a little bigger than the tab itself is. And you want to make sure that that tab is on the inside of the end of the cheek pad. While the wiring, of course, will be on the outside. Once you've got that captured, you can kind of work from back to front to slide the cheek pad back into place. You need to make sure that you have it far enough back that you're able to get over the clip. Kind of felt that jump over. And as I showed you on the other side, you still need to grab it, kind of slide forward. You can really feel once it goes into position, it kind of locks itself in. Then we can come back here and just continue to work that into its channel like so. All right, making some progress. This is definitely going to get a little more restrictive now having the cheek pads in there. Be a little more difficult to show you exactly what's happening here. We now need to secure the speaker and, of course, the remaining slack there in that wire. Let's go ahead and get the speaker into position, same way I showed you on the other side. The longer the two tabs at the bottom of the helmet, the shorter one at the top, 
push it into the molded pocket, you're going to hear an audible click. And go ahead and secure that wiring into the molded channel. And then push the wire for the speaker in the gap between the cheek pad EPS and the EPS that goes back towards the rear of the helmet. Now we have to deal with the rest of the wiring right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that into that same gap as much as I can and you're going to kind of create a little bit of a loop. I'm not really folding it super hard, but creating a bit of a loop. And then I'm going to pull that loop down towards the gap between the cheek pad and the EPS here of the uh, cheek pad itself. Once I have that, I keep an eye on that harness here for the, I may need something to kind of push that down in. Okay, once I have that secure, that loop can kind of go there, and now we grab the D-rings. As I showed you on the other side, you need to feed those through. That zipper pocket, once again, no idea why that zipper's there. Go ahead and push the D-rings through. Stick your index finger in there. Kind of feel around for them as you're putting a little pressure. Make sure the cheek pad is still all tucked away in there nicely. One last look at your wiring. Make sure it's in the right spot. I like how everything looks. Now we'll re-engage the three snaps. I feel like this install is a little more difficult than the install that I did on the two full face helmets, just a little bit different. Okay, now that you have that in position, before you close the canopy, let's kind of shape this mic a little bit. And what I want you to do is I want you to kind of bend it up a little bit. So a little bit up and then a little bit in. Grab the canopy and just kind of make sure that you're clearing it. Okay like so. Lock the canopy in the downward position. Let's grab our shield. Get it in the upward most position. Rotate it around and put a little inward pressure right there. You'll feel it just dip right in. There's a tab that corresponds with this trigger. All right, you can kind of see the tab as you look through the shield, like so, before you take the helmet out for a test drive. Actuate the shield a couple of times. Make sure you got it dialed in in the right spot. You don't want to have it pop off when you're riding. Let's double check the drop down inner. That looks like it's working good. When I come back, I'm going to have the helmet on. I found that for pairing this, it is easiest to do when you can hear all the voice prompts through the speakers. Okay, now let's pair this bad boy up. First, get to your smartphone. I've got an iPhone 10. Get into your settings menu, Bluetooth. From there, there are three buttons on the outside of this unit. The center button, the forward button, which is a plus, the rearward button, which is the minus. To power the unit up, you need to press and hold the center and the forwardmost button. Hello. You're going to hear some beeps, and then it's going to say hello. From there, we need to press the center button and hold it. You want to hold it until you hear the words configuration menu. It's going to go through three steps before it eventually gets there. So press and hold. Intercom pairing. Universal intercom pairing. Configuration menu. After you hear configuration menu, release the button. Pairing headset. Push the plus button up front. Then it says phone pairing. You'll see on the settings menu of the Bluetooth, Smart HJC 10B. Push that.
Your headset has paired. And you are Bluetoothed up just like that. Okay, there you have it. There's the install, and let's just kind of review it. Here's the base unit. The charging port is right here. It's towards the inside of the helmet. There's a little seal right there. USB. It includes a cable. It comes with it. It's an angled cable. It's got a 90 degree end on it. I charge both these up on my PC. There is no charging block, so you're going to need to like connect it to your PC or your laptop. Uh, these are firmware upgradable. It was not necessary for me with either the 10B or the 20B to upgrade the firmware before I could install it and use it. They both worked right out of the box. Let's be realistic. Most people that have products that are firmware upgradable never ever upgrade this stuff. There are times when it can improve performance, right? So that is something you want to be aware how to do. HJC has an app that you're able to download on your PC that allows you to upgrade it. There is also an app for your phone that I believe is meant to work with the 20B more so than the 10B. What we're focused on here is the 10B. And once again, for a lot of those fine details, right? I'm the type of user, I'm not getting into all the nerd stuff, I'm just not. I want to be listening to my jams. If there's an emergency and somebody has to absolutely call me, I'd like to be able to take it. Beyond that, when I'm riding my bike, I just pretty much want to be left alone. So there you have it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section of this video. You can clearly see I was able to get this installed in this i90 and get a really good, clean end result. One of the things that you do need to watch for is going to be the angle of the mic when you put it in. You want to make sure that it is clear in the canopy as you're raising it up and down. And that really has to do with just the shape. You want to bend it up first and then towards your face second. It'll just hold that spot right there and you'll be able to leave it there for an extended period of time.